Leif, really appreciate you talking to us You're today welcome. on uh, episode two of Sunday Stroll. For this one, we're going to have a little walk of uh, Portman Road, your, your new playing home, and uh, player of the month as well. Tell us a little bit about that. Uh, yeah, um, it was a good month for me. Um, uh, I played obviously every game that month. Uh, got an assist, I think. Um, but like I say, I said to the lads as well, I said, if it wasn't for them, I would not be getting this award because yeah. everyone's played together like as a team. The, the team should get it, you know what I mean? Um, but no, it's, it's a nice thing to get. Um, it's, it's nice to be recognised by the fans and just hopefully keep getting them and keep getting them and build up and build up. And that was something that uh, I think Chappers said as well because he got the PFA Player of the Month for August yeah. um, and he mentioned that real team spirit and how actually even though one player gets the award everyone's contributing to it. 100%, 100%. It's not just like if you play well then the other team, like your teammates are going to play well as well. Like mm. it's like if, say if someone plays bad but like it's going to drag you down a little bit but everyone just bang at it every day in training and in games and it's it's so that's why that's why you get the that's why you get the awards. Yeah. Um, like player of the month is a great thing to get. Um, especially from the fans to see that like, I've just come in as well and they're getting getting the hard work again mm. and seeing them voting for us which is it's incredible really I'm really happy. That must be really nice that you've created that bond not only with your teammates but from what you said there with the fans now. Yeah, hundred um, percent. it's Probably one of the best atmospheres I've been at um, as a stadium. Um, home games, 20, 25,000 plus every week. It's, it's what you dream of playing in front of, a big crowd. Um, but the fans are amazing. Um, I've seen like, a lot of comments saying that like, I'm obviously a good player and then that builds your confidence, uh, confidence up even more. Yeah. Um, but I'm just happy that I'm doing well um, and people are seeing it as well. So. You just got to keep going. Have you surprised yourself how, how quickly you've hit the ground running? It m always must be hard when you're a, a player joining a new club. Yeah, definitely. Because um, uh, obviously last year I struggled to settle in a bit yeah. at Bournemouth. Um, and I think because it was moving out, like quite far away from home as well, but I now, now I'm used to it. Um, coming in here and I just knew what I needed to do mm. to, to hit the ground running. Um, but no, it's, it just comes from hard work. Um, like you say, just coming in and doing things that I need to work on and doing games um, to do it, get it put right. Um, it's just gotta, I've just gotta keep going. How much of that comes from your specific role in the team as well? I think you've said off camera before we started just how much this role suits you and how much you enjoy it. What are the specific aspects of that that, that make you thrive? <laughs> the position I play here is where I love to play. Yeah. Um, it's it's literally the position that I've always played as Sunday League when I played Sunday League for all them years, um, which is just literally on the back line of a of the defence, um, and I just love getting the ball and just trying to to create goals, um, which I think I've got three assists this year, um, which is three more than last year um, already. But hopefully, I just keep getting in them areas and. What I love to do is just help the team get goals. How much do you feel like you've learned this season as well, working under the manager and the coach and staff, but also as a group, both you know tactically and in terms of your own personal game? Yeah, a lot to be fair. Um, like individual stuff for me was a lot, like a lot of things I needed to work on. Um, but like working with obviously the gaffer and, and his coaches, it, it's like made us go flying straight away. Um, mm like the defending and that kind of things I, I needed to work on which I knew I needed and then they came I came straight in here and they straight at it. Yeah. Um which which I was happy with. When I first met the manager he was just like he told us what I needed to do before I'd even signed here. Which I was like, well like, I've got a manager that's obviously really gonna help us. Yeah. Um and now when I came he did. Um and the funny thing was, was when obviously I came from Australia straight off the plane, he wanted us to train the next day um, to get us going. Yeah. Um, which just shows how eager he is to get, obviously, to get us going to play and that. But, um, but you just got to keep working hard and training. Yeah, you were actually a bit jet lagged for uh, your first <laughs> interview at the club, weren't you? Yeah. <laughs> I, I was I was miles off it when when I first came in. Um, I, f I literally felt like I was still on the plane. Mm. Um, when I came and done the MRI scans and that, I literally sat on the bed and I fell straight asleep. Yeah. I, was, I couldn't remember any of it, so... 
but I'm here now, so it's the main thing. What was the um, uh, time, like calendar events in terms of you being in Australia, as you just said, and then hearing about the move, landing straight away, signing, how did that all play out? Um, to be fair, it was when I was out there, um, it was a bit different because I was still playing, obviously, for Leeds at the time, yeah. and I didn't really know anything that was going on in the background of things, so I just left it to, to obviously the club and my agent kind of thing. Then it was just one, one morning I woke up and obviously the time difference was a lot, a lot different yeah. over there. Yeah, so I rang my agent, but I, like, I remember thinking, oh, it's actually like early hours of the morning over there. Um, and he said, like, just carry on like doing what you're doing and we'll sort it like towards the end of the trip. Yeah. Then I think it was like the second last day. I, um, everything had been like, kind of confirmed that I was coming down. Um, but obviously we weren't allowed to say anything at the time. Yeah. And um, it just, it was just like I just wanted to be here. Mm. You know what I mean? Like as soon as I got off the plane, that's why I came straight down. I think the club wanted it straight down as well, but I wanted to be straight down. I was saying to the lads, even in training, I was like, I want to be like, can I just go on a plane back already to, to get get going? Because yeah. um, I needed to obviously get ready for the season, get games going. But then I was straight in, obviously against Bolton, um, which I was a bit, a bit jet lagged still. But the manager obviously had high hopes of his going straight in, which he has. Um, he's playing us every week as well. And we've got a good team, um, and just got to keep going. Lee, you've spoken about how hungry you were at the beginning and coming straight in, and you've also said how much you love the match days at Port Road, the atmosphere and things. But how much do you? enjoy the everyday work that you're doing at the training ground and being with this group? I love it to be fair, um, it's why I strive for hard work, I literally, I just love coming in training, getting the work done, getting better as a player um, and like you say on a Saturday it's just when you're at home you just, you just doesn't beat it, like being there in front of all the fans, chanting your name on, winning games, it's, it just literally it just feels like a dream kind of thing um, and it's what I've dreamed of when I was younger as well. Um, growing up, just playing Sunday league football and just wanting to literally be a prof professional footballer. Yeah. Now, how does this work compare as well to your previous clubs? What you're doing every day on the training pitch? Um, it's uh, obviously having Marcelo as well. He was an intense manager. Yeah. And so was the gaffer here. Um, so I was quite used to it coming in. Um, then the, the Wednesday, I think we'd done a murder ball. And I was like, I was had to shake my head a little bit and think. <laughs> This feels like, like Leeds, you know what I mean? Like, but the training's, the training's very intense, um, which, is, which is good. Because if you don't do it really intense football uh, training, you're not going to get as, like, better as a player. Um, and I think as a team, when in training, I think everyone like, helps each other yeah. kind of thing. Um, there's no like no player that just doesn't give up, you know what I mean, in training. There's, everyone's just bang at it every day, which gets you better as a player. Um, but no, the lads are top in training. What does that take for a whole group to buy into that? How do you create that, that team spirit? I think it just comes from everyone, to be fair, like attitude. Um, it, it's just like the skipper as well, so Morsey, he's If you're not bang at it, he'll tell you, be like, it's not, just, to be fair, it's not just Morsey. Yeah. Everyone's like, come on, like, get you going like and train if someone's a bit they're like nah lads come on like they'll encourage and everything and I think it takes like some like it's hard to do at t like at the time you think like oh it's going to be hardest but then once you do it it's fine like yeah. you it's a, it's a breeze you've spoken a bit about the style in, 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 your, in the team as well and what you enjoy about the role and jumping back you spoke about Sunday League how similar is that and also Tell us a little bit about your journey into the professional game because you were actually playing Sunday League until a quite a late stage, weren't you? Yeah, so I started playing for a club called Crompton Juniors until I was, well, when I was about four or five years old, mm. um, just doing training in like an indoor kind of astro turf kind of pitch um, when I was four. Um, then all the way up till 16 is when I just played my, obviously, the part in Sunday League football, um, which was a bit like. I felt like I was, I should have given up because everyone had been getting contracts and I'd not been given anything. Yeah. Um, so I was thinking like, oh, like I've got nothing. I need to, 
I sort of think what I'm going to do next. Mm. But then I got the chance to go on a trial at uh, Morgan and I played, I think, 45 minutes against Carlisle. And when I was on my way home, they gave a phone call and I was just they were like, oh, I want to give you a two-year scholarship. Yeah. Um, so when I was there, done two years at, obviously, at Morgan. Then doing the two years, it was a bit difficult, like, at the time, like, I was only 16. Moving two and a half hours away from home, I was like, oh, I was homesick. I was ringing my mom every week saying, can you come and pick us up? Um, but uh, you've just got to get your head around it, like it's your job. Yeah. Um, you've got to move like where you've got to move to, you know what I mean? Um, and then I stuck at it. Um, I had to speak to a few people, obviously, because it was hard at the time. Um, and it was just, I just really wanted to go home. Yeah. Um, it was difficult because uh, I missed family quite a lot. Um, but then obviously the hard work paid off and then I went to Leeds uh, to do a sign of, I think it was a three year contract there. And from then I stayed there and then for three, three or four years, and then went to Bournemouth on loan. Yeah. And obviously it was obviously a different environment being back close next to the beach and that, which yeah. uh, was, <laughs> was quite nice. Going out in the mornings, like on a day off paddle boarding and that, it was it was nice to be fair, but it's not what you're there for, it's for the job. But you any good paddle boarding? To be fair, at the time I wasn't <laughs> I wasn't very good. I would stand up, and then yeah. I'd be straight off. But I got I got the hang of it, and I started to enjoy it. Yeah. And um, when you're playing Sunday league and you're reaching kind of 15, 16 years old, you said there that you were kind of thinking, like, shall I give up? Did that drive to continue come from within? Or did you have people around you that were helpful as well? Uh, my parents, to be fair, they they played a big part in it, um, especially my mum and dad, because um, they put the hard uh, work in for us, taking us to football games every sat uh, Saturday and Sunday. Um, and they were just saying, they just said to us, don't give up. Like, yeah. you came all this way, don't give up now. Um, and that was the main thing, just like my parents said to us when I was at at Morgan when I got there and I was saying oh, I was homesick and that kind of thing. Mm. Uh, they were saying don't give up, like you're in a good place um, and you never know what's going to happen. Yeah. And it's, if it wasn't for them then I probably would give up. Because um, at, at that age it's hard to, to get your head around things, like you don't really know what's going on kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but for them, like, I'll give all credit to them. How big do you think that is in football when, when young, young players, young guys, young girls are, are coming through the game and they have to experience that when they're moving away, homesick? How close can, can, uh, can young footballers like go, basically, to, to saying, it's not for me? It's, it's, it's a hard one to say because I think a lot of people have felt like that. Yeah. Um, loads of people I know that have moved away from home playing football like a few friends that have went to America and went straight back home yeah. and it's just like you've just got, as a young kid you've got to enjoy it you've just literally you've got to enjoy doing what you do you can't just go to football and not enjoy it you know what I mean but you just got to keep going just it's hard work and that, your attitude's the main thing um, you might not be technically a great player but if you're working and training every day you've yeah. got a good attitude people people look for attitude as well more the, the thing techni like technicality comes as a player, uh, you can work on your, but you can't work on your attitude and, and your mental kind of thing uh, in a game. Is that mentioned in the group here as well? I know got a lot of senior players here, you've got a lot of young lads as well. Is that yeah. spoken about the attitude? Yeah, hundred um, percent. Like I said, with Morsey, he he just wants the best of everyone every yeah. day, in which you should want the best out of yourself every day. Um, and I think obviously the manager as well. The manager just wants you to be the best you can. I think everyone does. Your parents, your family, all your family just want you to do the best you can you can do. Um, but the lads, obviously, great lads, and just keep pushing each other all, all week. That's actually something that Sam has said before, isn't it? That he didn't necessarily have that attitude at the beginning. He said, in, when he had his, um, his his program interview, that he had the the skill, he had the ability, but he didn't have the attitude at the beginning. And then eventually, the penny drops, and you just think, yeah. this is what I do now. Yeah, definitely. Um, You've got to obviously buy into it, because yeah. um, I've obviously I've seen a lot of players that have are technically the best best players I've probably played with, but their attitude wasn't like that good. 
and they're still playing now, but they could have been at the top, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I've seen so many, so many good players, but the just attitude doesn't, and I think that's a lot of, like, clubs look for that as well, like, you've got to have a good attitude, because if you're not going to, if you're not willing to work, then it's just pointless, you know what I mean? Because hmm. um, you could, you could be the best player in the world, like, Messi, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. But he might have the worst attitude, which, he wouldn't be, I don't think he would be as good as a player if he, if he doesn't have like, his attitude, you know what I mean? Like Ronaldo as well, he's doing, you see, doing extras two hours before training. Yeah. It's just like, attitude's a key thing to, to success, I think. Um, obviously, ability comes as well with it, but attitude, and that's just the main thing, and your hard work, so. And although we're talking a lot about how that's instilled in the group here, yeah. when did you feel like you were kind of developing as a, not just a, a young player, but a young man as well. When you got that move to Morecambe, how was that for you? It was it was a bit a bit different to be fair. Um, I was obviously just playing. I thought it was just like oh, I've got a contract. I was buzzing with the contract um, yeah. kind of thing, and it didn't really hit us until I was there. Um, and I can see now like my attitude wasn't the best back then. Um, I might have had a bit of like ability, mm -hmm. but and I, and I realised like. I had a few talks with people and saying that you could lose everything. Like yeah. you could lose doing what you're doing if you don't talk, like sort your attitude out. And when you're on that like kind of last warning kind of thing, you're thinking, like God, like you actually could lose everything here. Like yeah. my career kind of thing. Even though it, right, it could have just been starting. You know what I mean? Mm. Um, but. Obviously, when I when I moved to Leeds, um, when I was growing up a bit older, um, I say older when I was 18, um, and then I still find it like quite hard to, like with my attitude and that kind of thing. But then I realised like it's not worth it, because um, look what like what can happen. Like you can be the best best player in the world. You can be have a great career. Um, but then, obviously, the the main thing for me was when I grew up was probably Bournemouth. Yeah. Uh, I realised like when you've got no like no one around you. I only had like obviously my girlfriend and, and my dog. But yeah. when you don't have your family doing stuff for you, cause it's so far away, that's when you realise like I've got to grow up. I've got to grow up here, um, and you just got to start doing things for yourself and that kind of things. And I've, and I've seen to a lot of people, I said to my parents, I feel a bit like better person already, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, it's just, it's just going back to just attitude mm. and commitment's a, a massive thing. What was going through your head when you get that you get that call from Leeds or you meet up with Leeds and, this, and they're saying, yeah, we, we want to sign you? I was shocked to be fair, because I didn't get offered anything at Morgan. I didn't like, I wasn't offered anything up until Leeds came in, yeah, and I was like, like I was thinking, oh, like, am I? Is it like real? Like, so I'd not been offered anything at, at a club in when they were in League Two, so I was like, so why would I? Might, I thought like, oh, just is it just a rumor kind of thing? Um, but then obviously when it went all through, I was like, shocked to be fair. I was like, wow, like. A championship club have came in for us, and I don't obviously know how much it was for, but I was like, wow, like this is when it starts, yeah, and you've got to keep the work going. Who was on the end of the line? And you, who was the first person you called? My mum and dad. Um, it's always going to be the first people I call, um, and obviously, my grandma at the time, um, before she passed, um, she was a she was a huge part of it as well, yeah. Um, it's exactly the same as my mum, my, my grandma. Uh, she would do everything for us. Um, she played a, a massive part in doing things for football as well. Like if a, if a mum couldn't take us, she would take us. Yeah. And and I think like obviously family is just some, the most important thing. Yeah. Um, but I'm here now. That's a that's the main thing, and I'm just keep ready and kick on. Yeah. Now, your time at Leeds, this is going to be a very tough question to answer, I'd, I'd imagine. How do you sum that up? A um, bit of a roller coaster, um, a lot of ups and downs, um, two through uh, obviously injuries, um, yeah. with um, obviously on my knee, then with 
obviously going from more, uh, Morgan to there was a big step up. Um, like intensity wise for training, facilities and every, everything like that. Um, but with with Leeds, um, it was, it was a lot of good memories as well. Yeah. Like when we got promoted, um, and when I made my debut in the Championship, and when I made my debut in the Premier League as well. Yeah. Um, it's what you dream of as a kid to to play in the Premier League. Mm. And obviously, I'm I'm thankful for them. It's obviously, Marcelo giving us a, that opportunity to play there. Um, but it's like like everywhere you want to be playing. Yeah. Uh, week in, week out. And I had to obviously make the next step. Yeah. What a moment that was, though, getting that that Premier League debut against against City. Talk yeah. us through your emotions that day. <laughs> to be fair, like I didn't really have an, I had a bit of an idea, like obviously, because our left back got injured. Yeah. Um, uh, Alioski was injured and. And I was thinking, well, I'm the only other left back after Stewie Dallas. And if he can't, if he gets injured, then. But then I was thinking, like, I was thinking that a lot, kind of thing. You know what I mean? Like, mm. you've got to be ready, kind of thing. Um, you always got to be ready when you're on the bench. Um, but then when it happened, when he when he told us to go and warm up, I was like, hey, what's happening here? I was like, <laughs> I was like, nah, I can't be coming on like against obviously world class players, De Bruyne and everyone. Who was your personal match up on the day? I had Mark uh, Bernardo Silva. Easy task. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> I've never seen anything like it. Um, just the way City plays, I think everyone just wants to play like kind of City. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and Bernardo sort of. Uh, to be fair, I was thinking when I when I came on, when I'd seen him before, I was like, he's not the best player they've got. <laughs> but when I when I came on against him, I was like, wow, that's why he's playing for a top club like this. Hmm. Um, but. When I came on, I, was, I said to my family after, I was like, I've actually just played like in the Premier League. I was just like, I was getting all these messages saying congratulations, playing in the Prem. Um, obviously it was Bidrew 1-1 one, one as well, so, yeah. and I played 25 minutes, I think I played. And I was like, like I've done it, like, I'm done it obviously, because playing one game doesn't mean you've done it, like, you've got to, you can see you've done it when your career's finished, you've had a good career. Um, but like I felt like oh, I've done it. I've made my prem debut. I, c I can play in the prem. But and then another obviously appearance against um, Man United yeah. away. It was a bit different though because there's no fans, and I think like w it would have helped us a bit more. Like you know, fans are there. Mm. I would have felt probably more nervous, but I probably think like our oh, fans are there. They're gonna get us going. Like especially very vocal Leeds fans. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like here yeah, um, on a Saturday, they get you going, um, which is nice. Um, but my year was a bit of a different game. I came on in the, and I think I can't remember what minute it was, but five one down, mm. and I came on as a centre back, and I was thinking, I looked up, and then Bernardo Silva's running at, uh, Bruno Fernandez is running at us, and I was like, like I still, it still didn't hit us, you know what I mean, kind yeah. of thing that I'd already played against City, but. And then I had a Mark Cavani, and I was just like, he's played what PSG, all the top clubs, yeah. world class striker. Then I started to realise like I've actually like played, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but that's not the thing that like you should always look at. You should always look at things that you've done to, to get there. Right. Um, I was thought obviously I've played in the Premier League, yeah, but it's the hard work that comes with it. Like you've got to put the hard work in to get there. So, and although it's you know so early in, in your career, what moments stand out for you? Of course, your Premier League debut and, and things like that. But what are the moments that you feel so far have, have defined your career, and, and what have you really enjoyed about the game? <laughs> to be fair, like I said to you before, I was just playing games. And for me, I like I just love playing. Yeah. Um, it could be well, finishing anywhere in the table, but it's playing games. I just love playing football. Um, yeah. If you don't play, you you like you don't feel the same kind of thing. Mm. Um, but but yeah, like I see, the lads always play a big part in the game. Um, even when they they're coming off the bench, even if you don't start, they don't come on. They play they play a massive part in the in the team. Yeah. Um, which is what it's all about because it's everyone's everyone's together. Um, but it's just. <laughs> 
it's, it's hard to explain. It's just like it's like a feeling, is it? It is, yeah. Like it's it's one there where you can't explain it. It's like, but obviously the promotions is a massive thing with Leeds and then with Bournemouth. Um, the one with Leeds was obviously my first time and we'd won it. Yeah. And they won the won the championship, and it was like, wow. Like I'm like I'm 20. I've I didn't play like a lot of games, but I'd taken part. Mm. Um, and that was like, like what? Early on, and obviously, you think about it. You've won a, a medal already in your career, already. and then the next year after that, I went to Bournemouth. We finished second, but it's still a promotion, a medal. Um, yeah. And you just got to look at things like that that make you smile. It's just a few months, but from what you're kind of saying, do you feel like you're home here? 100 percent, 100 percent. Yeah. Um, I had a obviously a, a nice welcome from the players and the fans, um, and now I'm just I say it to my family every day. They keep saying like, "Are oh, you happy you're doing what you're doing?" I said, "I've made the right decision. Like, it's a might be a big step. People look at it and think, oh, it's a big step down, but mm. it's not. And I think it's a step forward. Um, coming down here is such a massive club, um, and I just love it." Um, Playing for the club is it's just unbelievable. Yeah, you talk about your warm welcome and someone that I, I witnessed it as well, the whole travelling squad did. You're not just a left back uh, teammate, but Greg, you and him were the two, uh, two up there for the initiation songs, weren't you? What'd you go <laughs> for and uh, did you surprise yourself in that department as well? Do you know what? It's a, <laughs> it's a funny one to say because obviously when I first sang at Leeds, I yeah. was, they were like, Gone, you've got a bit here. Yeah. And I, I sang the same song. I sang um, Bruises, obviously, by Lewis Capaldi. Yeah. And then I sang it again. I was thought, I might give it a go here when I, when I came here. So I stood up yeah. and get a right, obviously, a bash. But the lads are like, said, it was top. Yeah. But Having yourself over Greg? I've never heard Greg. I didn't oh, hear okay. Greg sing oh, at the course, time. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the lads were, the lads were saying, no, oh, he's better than Greg, is all. <laughs> but you know what, you just got, you got to enjoy yourself um, when you're doing it. It's a, it's, it's a laugh at, at the time, you know what I mean? It's only 30 seconds, but mm. it's uh, some of the, like obviously Keezy sang as well. He sang, uh, that was the only person I think I've heard, heard sing when I came, Keezy. Yeah. Um, and he sang, uh, uh, he sang Shallow, and that was, that was funny to be fair, because yeah. <laughs> he might give it a go. But you just got to enjoy it. It's, um, um, You've but, probably like, seen a few. I've seen, yeah, I've seen obviously um, at, at Bournemouth, I didn't do one at Bournemouth, yeah. um, I don't think they really enjoyed that kind of stuff yeah. down there, but um, Leeds, the lads loved it at Leeds, mm. and even like in Australia they'd done it, so all the new staff and everything were just in a bar, yeah. and they were, you know, just, sing, just got up singing in front of all like the, everyone that was in there. Yeah. Then they were like, go on, Leaf, get up, go, get up and show them what it's about. And I was like, I can't, I can't. <laughs> they ask us every time, like, they used to ask us all the time when everyone, like, a new player came in. Yeah. Right, now it's you then, Leaf. And I was like, can you stop, like, can you stop asking us, you know what I mean? I felt well embarrassed at the time, but... Have you been lucky enough to I've see actually, one of the I've uh, actually done, I've done it again. Yeah. I've done it again for them. Um, it was just in the pre-season. Um, I can't remember when it was, I think it was about two years ago, they were like, go on, sing again. Yeah. And I was just like, all right, I'll just sing for you, because like, I'm sick of you asking. So I just <laughs> I just got up and sang. And yeah. um, one of the lads actually videoed uh, Jan Pervera. Hmm. He videoed it. And he sent us a video after, and you, you could just see it. Like, he just turns the camera around on his face, and he's out. He's like, like <laughs> he was like, uh, shocked, like, how, how I was singing, but... It's another thing to have, you know what I mean? Yeah, another string to your bow. <laughs> yeah. Were you there for for uh, Gassans? Did you see his one? I, he did, I uh, don't. Despacito. I oh, I did. Yeah. I, yeah, yeah. Gasses was very good, actually. Yeah. Um, good song choice as well. Um, and he done it well. I think everyone was joining in with that as well because it's a nice, it's a good song. Yeah. Um, it's nice as well because we've spoken about a few. You know, I've spoken heavily about your your career and, and life on the pitch, but it's always good to learn a little bit about you off the pitch as well. You yeah. mentioned you've got a dog, you do paddle boarding, but yeah. early on in your days, season ticket holder at St. James's Park, what was yeah. that like? It was, 
it was obviously as a kid, everyone in Newcastle was just like, oh, get a season ticket, get a season ticket. And I was just like, so I wasn't really like massively into watching football. Yeah. Um, I would always just want to play it, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Um, so then I, f I got my first season ticket and it was with my, I think it was with my cousin. And we just literally sat up in level seven, right next to the away fans. Um, thinking we're the big, big dogs at the top, trying to give it to the away fans. Yeah. But we're only about, what, 13 at the time, I think. Mm. And it was just like, we just felt like the big lad kind of yeah. <laughs> thing, rocking into the stadium. Um, but no, it's, it's a, obviously an unbelievable stadium and it like, 50 odd thousand there. Mm. What players were you watching? For me, like when I was, I was first started, probably Johan Kabai was top, like yeah. top, top player. I remember one of his free kicks against Man U. Uh, literally, I think it was 3 3 the game finished. Mm. He's just, I think we're getting beat, and he's just whipped one right in the top ends. I'm like, nah, I love him. Like, I, I used to love anyone who took a good free kick. Yeah. Because um, I used to just love taking free kicks as well. Um, so you aren't goodbye, but probably now you could say oh, they're all doing well at the minute. You know yeah, what I mean? Are, yeah. And they brought in a lot of good players. Um, I like at the minute, obviously Bruno, yeah, um, and Joe Linton. <laughs> the two Brazilians are just <laughs> on fire at the minute. Um, it's like they're carrying the team kind of thing. Yeah. Obviously, Kieran Tripp here as well. He's getting man of the match. He mentioned a good free kick. Oh, he's, he's right up there. He's right up there. Um, and he's getting man of the match every week. Yeah. Um, and literally, the, the way Newcastle are going, I think they're going to do well. Yeah. Um, but for Joe Linton and Bruno are top players. Nice. So I think everyone, good, loves yeah. everyone loves it. Everyone loves them in Newcastle as well. Yeah. Every, bo both love the Brazilian players up there. Mm. So. So they're right up there. You stuck a few in your FPL team? I've got, I have, I have, I've got, I have Bruno in and I've got St. Maximum in. Nice. But Saint, obviously I had to take him out because he got injured. Yeah, yeah. But I think I'll be putting him straight back in. And how are you getting on? A bit rusty, to be fair. <laughs> it, oh, do you know what? This a, is, it's a long season. It is, it is. But this is the first year I've actually done it. Mm. Like, properly, like, stuck at it. I've always said, like, oh yeah, I'll do it, I'll do it. And I've, I've got, like, I've done the team. A couple of weeks in, I just like, it's like I've just deleted the app. Like, I've never even look, <laughs> I never look at it. Yeah. And this year, obviously I keep looking at it, but I'm doing absolutely rubbish at it. Like, I'm, I think I've used my wild card already and I'm like, my team at the minute's all you right. You need a miracle. Me, I, need, I literally do. I think <laughs> I'm 25th out of 29th or something. So yeah. I'm down there. I'm not in the relegation zone, but I'm down there, I think. Mm. Um, but I could probably be rock bottom, to be fair, because a few lads started on the second week, you know what I mean? Right. So I could be, I could have been in trouble if they didn't start. So now that you're, you're so settled into the area and really settled into the team as well, what are your kind of personal aims for the season? I know that there's one main uh, goal as a team, isn't there? But what, what are you hoping to achieve on, on a personal front? I just talk back and obviously, get the best out of us in the year. Um, I just want to try and keep building as a player um, and wanting to get to be the best player I can, in which I think the direction I'm going, I can do that like yeah. with, the, with the stuff. Um, but like you say, the main thing is just promotion. Um, however we'll get it, if we get promotion, it'll, it'll mean so much again, obviously having another promotion, but taking a big, playing a bigger part in it this year. Um, Obviously, because like the last two with Leeds and Bournemouth, I didn't play as like a lot of games kind of thing. Yeah. But now, like, if we get promoted, hopefully we get promoted, shall I say. Um, then I know I've played a big part in that. Yeah. And hopefully play more games and that. So, yeah, it's just, it's just playing, playing week in, week out um, is the main thing. And then backing it up with a promotion. Well, you weren't playing um, regularly, like you said there, for Bournemouth and Leeds when you achieved the, the promotions. What did you feel you learned about yourself and also the group? And, and is that an experience 
that you feel you can like feed back to the current crop? Yeah, um, obviously it was tough not playing games, um, which you want to do, but you still learn a, a lot of a lot of things, like in training and that kind of thing. Yeah. But you're still a part of the team at the, at the same time. You know what I mean? Um, you're still always like taking part in training. You're still on the bench, kind of thing. And it's like you just gotta keep going. Um, and now having that experience and knowing what to do, uh, obviously with the two promotions, hopefully I can help the lads here, um, try and buy, get them to buy into it as well. They've obviously had a lads here have had promotions as well, yeah. um, so they know what it's like. And I think Freddie obviously had one not long ago as well. But in he'll say the same. You just gotta, you just gotta keep digging deep. Um, you, like the lads that aren't playing, if you don't play a week. You still gotta be a part of the team. Like you might play the week after, you know. But it's just getting the experience to be like to try and bring my experience that I've had in the change rooms where we've been promoted to here. Yeah. And try and get them to obviously get the lads to think think the same. Leaf, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on bus this it. afternoon. Really appreciate you, you talking much. to us for episode Thank two you. of uh, Sunday Stroll. Thank you very much.